Hi guys, so let's put all of that theory that we've been learning in the last few lessons into practice with this nice straightforward statement of financial position. This is a basic example of the balance sheet. Uh, it may look a little bit scary, okay, but as we break this information down, you'll be able to understand what we've got here. Okay, so we've got two different periods, of course, 2017 and 2018. This is in thousands of pounds, so in effect, we've got six point one two million pounds as a result of that okay um, now as we actually look at this information we see we can see with non-current assets we start at 6.12 million uh, and then we see that rise to 6.38 million so this is clearly a business which is in the process of expanding it's trying to increase its output it's trying to increase its reach now we've got some missing information here that we need to complete for this statement of financial position uh, once again that's going to be nice and straightforward in terms of actually doing this and then we'll run through what the information truly means okay so as we uh, just take this through let's fill in the missing areas that we've got here so to work out firstly on our total assets that's our first missing figure that we've got all we've got to do is take the value of our non-current assets which is of course buildings machinery uh, and add our current assets which might be cash in the bank it might be trade receivables uh, so payments that are due from uh, people that have bought your goods or haven't yet paid for them uh, as well as cash in the bank so we add those two together that simply gives us and of course if you want to you can get started on completing this yourself if you pause the video now Right, great stuff. So let's uh, run through the completion of this. So we've got 9,280 when we add those two together, okay? Uh, so nice straightforward principle to actually work out our total assets. You can see it's simply uh, the fixed assets or let's put down non-current assets rather. Uh, so the non-current assets plus uh, the actual current assets that we have there and that will give us our total figure So then we've got our current liabilities here as well and net current assets Well, if you remember here to work this out We've simply got to take the current assets and subtract the current liabilities and that will easily then tell us our figure for uh, the net current assets position. Okay, so as we run through that, we can see we've got current assets 3160 minus that 2480. Uh, so what does that give us? Well, of course, it gives us a figure of 680. Uh, so we can pop that one in. Let's get 2017 rounded off and then uh, you should be uh, okay with that in terms of actually completing 2018. But we do have some missing numbers from different areas there, okay? Uh, right, so net assets. Well, how do we work that out? Well, remember, it's your non-current assets. Uh, so your non-current assets plus your current assets uh, minus, minus, of course, subtracting your non-current liabilities plus your uh, current liabilities. So that is the formula to actually work this one out. So what we can see here is that we've got our non-current assets there, okay, got our current assets, okay, uh, fine, there's our current liabilities and then there's our non-current liabilities. So when we actually put that information through, that ends up at what, 4,030, okay, so 4,030. So again, nice and straightforward. Now, this is the finance by part of the balance sheet. I've just broken this down into one simple area, capital and reserves, okay? This might be share capital, uh, which could otherwise be known as equity, but uh, really, when it comes to uh, this terminology, it could be broken into two areas, in which case you would see a breakdown, but um, a breakdown of that information and exactly how much is reserves, how much is uh, share capital. Anyway, uh, we'd, we've just got one criteria to fill out here. So we can see that given that there is uh, 4,030 or 4.03 million pounds employed in this business, um, well, we can see that the figure is, of course, going to be 4,030 once again. Okay, as we look at the uh, information we've got here, we can see that we've got current assets missing, okay? Um, so we know the difference between our total assets and the non-current assets will obviously be that current assets figure. Uh, so that will tell us that it's actually 700, whoop, I've put the uh, wrong one in, done the uh, wrong calculation. 
Um, so let's correct that, let's not make that mistake. Uh, I was jumping ahead a little. Right, so here we go, 3-3-4-0. Three, three, nice and straightforward once again. Um, okay, so where do we go next? Well, we've got this net current assets. Remember, it's current assets minus current liabilities, of course. All right, so there's our current assets. There's our current li liabilities. Let's put that information in. And now we can see we've got 720 million. Okay, fine. Um, now, the net assets here is actually calculated for us. It's so just to remind ourselves now uh, the non-current assets plus the current liabilities minus the non-current liabilities plus the current liabilities, okay? All right, so all of the assets minus uh, the uh, all of the liabilities in essence, okay? Nice straightforward principle. And once again, we can see that these amounts will equal out to balance for the business, so 4160. Okay, um, so there we go. The total capital, capital employed in the business, we can see is of course, that 4,030, okay, 4,160 there. Again, nice and straightforward as a principle there. Okay, uh, final point to uh, just bear in mind is what does this really help us to understand? So let's just take these calculations off because we're not worried so much about those, but imagine you had to do a comparison between uh, a balance sheet or statement of financial position between years. Well, we can see here there has been an increase in the non-current assets, so as we said, they're trying to increase output. So that's the first thing to note. As they increase output, of course, they are actually increasing uh, their current assets. That may be cash, it may be uh, trade receivables, it may be inventories, holding much greater inventories to deal with that more larger scope that the business now has. Uh, one thing I would say, though, is it's risen quite substantially. Uh, and we can see that the net current assets position was already pretty positive, uh, and that's increased further. That might worry you, and you, you could, of course, do a liquidity test on this. Perhaps they're investing too much money in stock and have too much money tied up. We don't have that breakdown on the current assets, but it's possible you might have that in your exam. Okay, uh, what else can we also see? Well, current liabilities has also increased as well. Um, just looking at that, roughly uh, at the same sort of level that we see that increase in current assets as well. So perhaps that's uh, an increase in uh, trade payables uh, that we've actually got to pay out. So almost like trade credit being received there. And the net current assets or working capital position of the business is still positive and it's even stronger than it was. Once again, that may concern you, okay? Um, because you don't want inventory just stood still or cash in the bank just stood still not being productive. Okay, then we can see our non-current liabilities. Well, their borrowing has also increased and perhaps they are financing this by simply uh, this increase in buildings, machinery, whatever it is, via uh, an increase in borrowing. So this means, of course, that they're now more susceptible to interest rate changes, more vulnerable to that. And that will have cost implications on uh, their uh, income statement. Now we've got our net assets and we can see that the value of the business overall, however, has increased. So that's certainly positive there. As we actually work through to our capital and reserves, we see 4,030 and uh, yeah, okay, now that's increased year on year. There is more capital employed in this business. It certainly seems to be growing, okay, but it is taking on that much more debt. Does it have too much tied up in inventories? Well, we can't be sure but we could certainly write about that. Okay, great stuff, guys. I hope that's been useful.